first scripture lesson this evening, and I've been practicing all day to say this evening, and I'm sorry about that Friday morning on that, I didn't think it changed that. Um, but uh, yes, uh, the scripture lesson this evening, the first one is from Micah, chapter 5, and we'll be reading verses 2 through 5a, first part of verse 5. Let's listen to the prophet Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Our next lesson comes from Hebrews. And we'll be reading verses five, uh, chapter 10, verses 5 through 10. Hebrews 10, 5 through 10. Listen to Paul's uh, writing, or to the author of Hebrews. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And finally, our gospel lesson this, this evening, I almost said this morning, <laughs> this evening comes from Luke. And we're going to be reading chapter 1, beginning with verse 39. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that, that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped, he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. 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 Well, we had a bigger crowd tonight than I, than I expected. Uh, there was four of us here uh, yesterday. Um, myself and, and Lee and uh, the uh, Pontowskis. Tom and uh, Linda uh, came by to see if anything was happening. Uh, they got as far as the driveway. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, but you were late. No. <laughs> Out in the, 
it was in the, not necessarily this part of the Garden State, but it was someplace where there was a lot of cattle. And a uh, little backwoods church, about uh, 15, 20 people, average attendance. Well, he gets there, and there had been a terrible storm. And so uh, when he got there, only one guy had showed up. And so he said to the guy, uh, you know, should I go ahead and, and, and do the service? And, and the man said to him, well, you know, I don't know much about preaching, but I know when I go out to take food to my cows and only one shows up, I'm going, I'm going to feed that cow. And, and so, uh, so the pastor said, well, okay. Now, he'd been working for weeks on this message. You know, this was his first message for this church. And, and he, he goes ahead and he preaches and he preaches and he preaches. He goes on for, for a good hour uh, just preaching. And so he finally gets done, and he walks up to the guy and says, well, what did you think? And, and he says, well, I don't know much about preaching, but I know if uh, I go out uh, to my cows and, uh, and one cow shows up, I don't dump the whole truck of food on him. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I may not dump the whole truck of food on him. But I, I, didn't dump, I didn't dump any food on the, those who showed up yesterday. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, we're still in our sermon series. Uh, we have the seven-part series on testifying to love. And, sang that song you know, just a little while ago, Testify to Love. Uh, we began by talking about God's righteous love, and I talked about how that had to do with, with our covenant with God, that we serve a covenant-keeping God, a God who loves us and is faithful to us. He shows us his righteousness by keeping his covenant. This is the Father, the whole rest of the night, and I'm watching you. Sorry. 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 By keeping covenant, and, and we testify to that love by our faithfulness, our faithfulness and love to God, and our faithfulness and love to neighbor. The next week we talked about uh, unfettered love, and we said how that love of God is a love that has nothing holding it back. In other words, God's love is, is unleashed; it's, it's it's unencumbered. It moves out and, and finds a way, it seeks a way to love in a radical way, and that we're called to testify by that to that kind of love, to unfettered love, by the fact that we too love in a radical way. We reach out beyond all the walls, we reach out beyond all the restrictions, and we love with the same kind of intensity and power that God loved us. We also talked about liberating love, a love that frees us from bondage to sin and death and fear. And we accept this free gift, this gift from God through Christ that gives us the power to live a life that is filled with joy even in the midst of the brokenness of the world around us. A life that has that peace that passes understanding, even when things are going wrong. Uh, unfortunately, the example we used last week was the funeral I had to do that week for the two-year-old. And, and how we could see that love in the midst of, of death. We could see the love of, of relatives and friends and family where 480 people came to the viewing just to, as an expression and outpouring of love for that family. And that's the kind of love the church has to have. In the midst of brokenness, in the midst of death, in the midst of loss, we still love as God still loves us. Today we're talking about God's transforming love. This love of God that is, is so powerful that it completely changes us. We become different when we meet that transforming love of God. Our text from Micah this morning, the Old Testament text, uh, was a prophecy about Bethlehem, about that tribe of Judah, the smallest, well, one of the smallest tribes of Judah, and how that town was transformed because God chose that place to be the town where Christ was born. How that backwater town was transformed into a place that people around the world, even to this day, think of when they think of Christmas. We, just, we sing a little town of Bethlehem. We, we talk about that town. It was transformed from, uh, from some innocuous uh, little town that nobody probably knew about to, to a town now that is world renowned and, and known by all. Jesus was born to parents who were poor, unwed, and they were transformed into those who, who became the, if you will, this doesn't work theologically, but if you will, the mother and father of, of, of God, of, of Christ. Uh, the, these, it shows us that God chooses to reach down to the weak and the lowly and the broken and make something out of our lives.